My name is Tom Walters. I'm an assistant professor and staff paediatric gastroenterologist at SickKids Hospital in Toronto, Canada. On behalf of my co-authors and all the investigators participating in the ProKids Risk Cohort Study, a study fully funded by the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation of America, it is my pleasure to present to you a brief synopsis of our study recently published in Gastroenterology. A current clinical challenge and the aim of our study is determining the optimal placement of immunomodulator and anti-TNF-alpha therapies within the everyday treatment algorithms for children with Crohn's disease. In our analysis, we use propensity scores to match patients. I'm going to focus this short discussion specifically on our propensity score methodology. Increasingly, and usually in patients who are thought to be at risk of severe, chronically active disease, some paediatric IBD specialists are using anti-TNF agents early in the treatment course, often without an initial trial of immunomodulator. Given such patients, if not initially commenced on anti-TNF therapy, will likely be rapidly escalated to it if other treatments are unsuccessful. The question remains as to whether that very early timing of anti-TNF is really of any consequence. Or, to put it simply, does it matter if you start straight away or quickly step up? Of 552 patients from the risk study, 68 patients received anti-TNF monotherapy within three months of diagnosis. 248 patients received an immunomodulator within the first three months but did not receive anti-TNF. And 236 patients, having received induction therapy, received neither an immunomodulator nor an anti-TNF agent until at least three months after diagnosis. Although it is tempting to simply compare the 12-month outcomes for each of the three groups using the complete data set, such an approach would be severely confounded. In short, baseline clinical appearance tends to both influence a physician's early treatment decisions and predict long-term outcome. Thus, there is confounding by indication. An interventional clinical trial deals with this challenge by randomization, resulting in the various treatment groups having similar baseline characteristics. In an observational study, you need to similarly balance the baseline characteristics prior to any analysis. We did so using a technique called propensity score matching. First, we constructed a logistic model examining the likelihood of patients in the cohort receiving anti-TNF therapy or not. This model included all the features we considered pertinent in a physician deciding to utilise an anti-TNF agent early. By then placing each individual patient's characteristics into this model, we were able to assign them a numeric score that ranged from 0 to 1 representing the probability of that patient receiving anti-TNF therapy based on their baseline characteristics. Using their propensity scores, we sequentially matched each patient from the early anti-TNF group to a patient from each of the other two treatment groups who had an identical propensity score. This is a robust method of balancing baseline characteristics and is the approach recommended for comparative effectiveness research. Having now matched each of the 68 early anti-TNF patients, we performed the rest of the analysis just on this subset of 204 patients. In this group of patients now clinically similar at baseline, our primary outcome was corticosteroid-free remission by 12 months without requiring surgery. In the patients who received no immune therapy within the first three months, 54% achieved this outcome. This was not statistically different from patients who had commenced on immunomodulator therapy early, where the outcome was 60%. Of note, this was despite almost 30% of the patients in each group escalating their therapy to anti-TNF during that year. In contrast, 85% of the patients receiving anti-TNF within the first three months achieved the 12-month outcome. It was not possible to isolate any single or specific group of clinical features that clearly identify which patients will or will not do significantly better by virtue of getting TNF therapy early. It is our hope that further genetic, serologic and microbiome analyses of our study cohort, whilst maintaining the same rigorous comparative effectiveness methodology, will better elucidate the value of different treatment decisions for individual patients. I hope you find reading our full manuscript both enjoyable and useful. Thank you for your attention.